Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything. Welcome back. We are at my friend Chelsea's restaurant and I'm gonna show you how I made these really simple skylight mounted planter boxes to add a really cool focal point to this space while also letting light in. Check it out. All right, so starting out this project, I'm going to be using some premium boards from Home Depot. Now, there's a lot of different ways to build something like this, and you can see here in the little SketchUp rendering that I made, uh, it's a very simple kind of construction. It's going to essentially be a U-shaped planter box that wraps around in a square, or in this case, it's almost a rectangle, um, because the light wells that I'm going to be fitting these in are slightly out of square. But I'm going to be going and doing most of this on the miter saw. Now, I have to make three of these, and I'm really only going to show the process of making one. But basically what I did was I cut my miters over on the miter saw for the bottom section of the planter. And now I'm over on my workbench using a Craig Foreman to put some pocket screws to give a little extra grab on these miters. Now, these things are pretty much structural because they're going to have a planter in it, a uh, plastic planter to hold the water and the dirt. But they're going to, you know, be pretty heavy. Um, if you think about how heavy a planter filled with dirt and plants and water is, there is a lot of mass there. So I wanted to make sure they were really strong. Now, if you don't have a Craig Foreman jig, you could just use a regular Craig jig, but the Foreman just makes it a little bit easier. It's essentially an automatic, automatic pocket hole driller. Um, and this one happens to use a pneumatic cylinder, but I'm using some pinching clamps on the outside of the miters and then a little clamp to kind of keep the boards level. And then with some glue and some screws connecting these corners. Now it's important that this is as close to true as possible. So you wanna make sure that your saw is tuned up and your miters are pretty square. And sometimes with pocket screws, what you'll have to do is you'll have to take them out and readjust them, um, sort of try to get things tight because the grain in the wood can take the screw and kind of mess up your miter. So now once those were screwed in, I gave it a quick little hit with the sander just to see how those miters looked. And then I can go ahead and start working on the perimeter. Now I need these planters to be a certain height and I think the best way for me to accomplish that is to do a bevel cut on my miter saw. Now this isn't the most accurate way to cut a tall miter like this. Um, a lot of people will use a sliding sled on their table saw, but I think from a simplicity standpoint, this is definitely the easiest way to do it, especially if you can kind of adapt and correct some of your mistakes with some wood filler um, or by just kind of tuning your saw to make sure it's cutting that bevel accurately. Now, once I had those pieces cut, I basically shaped them around the outside perimeter of the box. And it's important here to measure the actual bottom that you make and then cut your side pieces to match that. Now, no matter how hard you try and measure when you're cutting miters, if there is just the slightest discrepancy in your saw, your miter is not gonna be exactly that length. So if you're trying to build miters that compound on each other, like something like this, you really need to measure what you've built and then go from there. So you can see I'm closing up this miter using these little pinching clamps, and then I'm using this 18 gauge nail gun from Milwaukee to close everything up. I use the nail gun a lot on this project um, and it was a really great use case for it. Again, not having to use a hose or a cord if you've used a brad nailer before is so nice. And right now I'm working up on the table because my table is perfectly flat. Instead of having to try to spin this thing around, I don't have to worry about tangling up with a hose. I can just bring the nail gun over and start sinking in nails. Uh, and obviously into this soft pine, it sinks perfect, but I've also used it in hardwood and it's done a great job. So now the outside frame is done, I can glue it to the bottom. And it's important to not glue things prematurely because you wanna make sure your fit up is really tight and you always wanna dry fit things. And you can see I have it hanging off the edge and I'm leveling the bottom with the edge of the planter as I go. And then I'm sinking some brad nails into the side with some glue in there. So I'm really creating a very strong joint. Um, I'm using some type bond too, and it's gonna really give me a good bond. And now you can see some of the plastic planners. They're these clear planners that my friend Chelsea had made specifically for these planners for her restaurant. So now I have to build the interior perimeter, the interior verticals, again, over on the miter saw, cutting a bevel. And you have to watch your accuracy here, like I said, you really wanna make sure that your saw is cutting true and square. So if you have kind of a crappier miter saw, you might wanna really spend some time to tune it up. But all I'm doing here is creating a nice tight wedge fit that I can put some glue on the outside corners and wedge everything in. Then I can get my nail gun in and some more of those little pinching clamps to get the outside. 
Now I'll throw a link to these pinch clamps down in the description. These things are great. The only thing that you have to worry about is if you're working on a finished piece, they do obviously leave an indent um, and you kind of need a lot of them because if you're trying to get a lot of pressure on a corner, you're going to need two or three of them. And then you're going to have, you know, six, four or six holes that you're going to have to fill. But what I'm doing here is essentially gluing and nailing from the inside. I'm hitting the miter from the inside with the nail gun, and then I'm hitting the inside edge with the nail gun as well by hanging it off my bench and making sure that everything is nice and level. So now with that all done, I can kind of move this thing around and add any extra nails that I think I need just to make sure that thing, the thing's gonna be really strong. And then I go with just a little straight razor blade and I scrape off any of the excess glue that's on the bottom. Now, a lot of people like to let their glue dry, then sand it off, but I've always found it's easier to scrape it off when it's kind of in like a jelly form um, and, you know, do as much as you can. Now, in order to hang these from inside the skylights, I'm going to be using this two by two angle. Now, I'm going to be cutting these on my big bandsaw, but if you were doing this in a little simpler of a shop, you could definitely do this with like a hacksaw, a sawzall, an angle grinder. So I'm cutting the two by two up and I'm making sure that all of my lengths are the same. Now I am building three of these, like I said, so it's a considerable amount of material and there is a height limitation in the actual space as to how far we can hang these down. So I'm only able to make these pieces um, about 30 inches long and then they're, they're gonna hang down about 18 inches from the actual ceiling. Now hanging down 18 inches is not an 18 inch piece, obviously, because I need to have the metal inside the box and also inside the light well. Now, in order to have it look a little more clean when it was up inside the light well, I decided to cut a 45 degree angle on one direction with the, with the angle iron on uh, sort of the bottom of the web, which will give this cool kind of like stepped corner. And I think it'll just look decorative and not make it look so abrupt. Now I'm laying out the holes that I'm gonna punch in this using the iron worker. Again, you could definitely do this all with a drill press, but when you have a metal shop like mine, I might as well take advantage of the tools. Now, the layout on these are pretty simple. No one's ever really gonna see these screws, so I'm able to do it without really measuring, just by lining up all the pieces and using a Sharpie and using my finger as a guide to mark some spots. Now, the iron worker is a 38 ton punching unit and it does some shearing as well, and you can put in different dies to cut different size holes. So in this case, I'm punching holes for larger screws that will mount into the actual light well itself, and then I'll go back and I'll punch some smaller holes with a 3 16 punch for the screws that'll be mounting through the angle iron and into the inside of the planter. You can see just how fast this machine is. All I'm doing here is basically pressing a foot pedal, which is actuating the punch, and it is just shooting that punch right through the metal, leaving a really clean hole. And for stuff like this, where you know accuracy is relatively important, but you don't need it to be 100% perfectly spot on, all you're doing is adding screws, you can move really, really quickly through material like this and that knuckle allows you to get good access even on a piece of two by angle. Now while I was cutting up all that angle iron I had put some wood filler on the boxes so I try to work really efficiently especially when I'm building something in batches. So when I was in the metal shop that wood filler was drying and then before I work back in the metal shop to mount the steel I could go in and I could sand all that wood filler down and get a really nice finish. Now I'm temporarily mounting the steel inside the corner just to make sure that everything fits. And then I'm gonna be measuring for some two inch steel strapping that's gonna hold up the planters. Now in my original design, I didn't account for any additional steel, but as I built these things and the more I thought about them, the safety aspect of all the weight of these planters being held up by just the screws through the side of that angle made me a little bit nervous. So I went over into my you know, metal stock area and I got some two inch flat stock and I decided that I would weld it in between the pieces of angle against the bottom of the planter itself. Now, if you think about the way that these things will stack up, the actual planters will now sit on a piece of steel that's welded to the angle and the reliance on those screws to hold all that weight is pretty much zero, right? It, let's say those screws were to fail, those planters would still be sitting on that steel strapping and the steel would be hung from inside the light wells and I wouldn't have to worry about it. It was an extra step, it took a lot of extra time and cost me a little extra money, but I think in the end it gives you a better result and it's a lot stronger and a lot safer for whoever's in her place never to have to worry about anything crashing down, which is really the most important thing for me. So now once that was done, I could bring everything out into the other room where I'm going to paint 
these frames. Now my metal shop and my machine shop are a bit cramped right now because I'm in the middle of moving a million different things around, but I was able to stack these up uh, kind of nesting on each other. And then I was able to paint them using some Rust-Oleum clean metal primer. And then I'll go back with some white Rust-Oleum paint and top coat them. Now I didn't paint the inside um, just because I thought I may be gluing these into the boxes and I didn't want the glue to have to stick to paint. But the only thing you're gonna see is a little bit of those angles, so it seemed fine. Now, again, while that was being done, I was adding any additional wood filler and making sure that everything was sanded and looked really, really good. So while the wood filler was drying, I could go back into the other room while paint was drying, and then I could stick these little metal frames inside the box while standing in them up and then tip it down onto its side and I can add in all my screws to mount the framework to the actual planner itself. Now I put six screws in each, each piece of angle and they are the absolute longest they could be without poking out the other side. And here you can see the way those planter boxes fit. They work perfect. And again, like I said, we had these custom made by a guy online so that they would be watertight and fit really well. You can see the planters before we brought them over to the restaurant. They came out really, really nice and look super clean. And then the general contractor mounted them inside the skylight boxes, inside the light wells themselves, using some uh, structural lag screws. And then Chelsea filled them with plants and they came out beautiful. I'm really excited to see this place finished and see how customers react to such a unique item hanging above their heads. All right, that about does it for this video. So like I said, the actual building of these was really simple. Um, the design had a little bit of nuance to it because they had to fit exactly in the light wells for the skylights, but um, this is something that could easily be replicated uh, at any scale if you wanted to build something similar. The thing that I added I think is really important is that steel strapping along the bottom because if for any reason the wood were to fail, um, these would come down. And it's much more likely that screws in wood would fail, especially if they happen to get wet while they are being watered, than the steel, which is obviously all welded together. So right now, the planter boxes that are in there are filled with dirt and then plants and some water. So they have some mass to them, but all of that weight is bearing down on the steel, which is tied up to the angle iron, which is screwed into the corners of the light wells. It's all LVLs up there. Um, and I feel really confident in the strength of them. Obviously, that was really critical considering that there's gonna be a lot of people in here. So. If you want to check out Chelsea's restaurant, uh, Flourish Bake Shop and All Day Cafe, check it out right here. If you recall, I made the baking rack for here, and this place is coming out so nice. Um, I'm here in the morning, and there's just such a beautiful amount of light in here. It's going to be an amazing place once she gets open, which will be very soon. So come check it out in Glenhead, New York, on Long Island. Um, and shout out to Tom Simeone and his team at Simeone Construction who mounted the skylight boxes and the wall planters, which will be in a future video, another really simple project um, that can add a lot to your space. So if you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here at Make Everything Shop. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Again, I'm Chris Epp from Make Everything, and I will see you on the next one.